Okay, so let's go for the code away. And when we do that, let's first think about what we need when we want to make our own experiment, um, where we need some kind of the user interacting with us. So we need a graphic user, inter user interface, which the user actually sees. We need some kind of stimulus, which can be visual, auditory or something to which the user has to react. And then how does the user react? Well, by input. So basically IO. Additionally, we need some kind of experiment flow or design. So what's in the builder view here is uh, the lower thing here. So first we show the instructions and then we want the first block to practice trials, um, which are repeated for some times. Then we want some new instructions, for example, and then we have the trials. And then in the end, we thank the user for um, participating in our experiment. So some kind of this order being there. Um, of course, we have to lock our data because if we don't lock it, the experiment is worthless. And then we also need some um, other stuff, like for example, table port communication if you're working with EEGs. Um, we need an experiment clock, which is precise enough, etc., etc. And now we focus on the first three parts in the first part and then on the later ones afterwards. So I'm showing you first of all graphical user interfaces in general, then PsychoPy, then Experiment, the other uh, library I want to show you to make experiments. And then afterwards, we're going to focus on the experiment flow and design. Okay, so whatever library for experiments you have, they all rely on some kind of backend to present visual and auditory stimuli. And these backend are generally, so GUI libraries, for example, Pygame. Um, Pygame is not the best in terms of um, accuracy of the timing, which we're going to look at later. Um, but it is a really nice and simple one to understand. And Experiment uses it at its backend, and Py PsychoPy also does so if you install it by default, even though they say themselves they don't want to use it anymore due to the issues with PyGase timing. So they deprecated it, even though it's still the default backend. Um, but the principle of how to get something onto the screen is equal most of the time anyway, besides the fact that right now, so as of in the past few years, you sh would normally use the web browser for GUIs, but also we don't have the control and timing in that. So we stick with normal GUIs. And for the first part, we're going to stick with Pygame. So let's look at Pygame to understand what's going on there. Um, so when we first want to show something in Pygame, we first have to initialize Pygame, and then we have to set some settings for the display. Among these, we have the display mode, which decides the actual window Pygame will open in. So in this case, we're going to set the mode into a window of size 240 times 180. And once we have done this part, we initialized, we set the um, mode for the display. It's going to show it. However, it's non-interactable. So if I press this button, it doesn't help. It just once until um, where my code ended. So if I have the time.sleep inside here, it will show. And if I don't have it, it won't even show because, well, it runs for 0, 0.0 seconds. To show this part, I needed to uh, enable my dual screen setup um, because uh, Pygame stretches um, non full screen resolutions to full screen, which sometimes doesn't work, which always doesn't work on multiple displays. So um, make sure <laughs> to have only one screen when you want this part. And also this part doesn't run inside um, Jupyter, <laughs> which is why I have the assert faults. I just want to show you. So here is how to set the mode and you can toggle the full screen. However, this will only stretch this 240 times 180 to full screen, which will make your resolution 240 times 180, which is of course not much. So you have to find the full screen mode and set the display mode to full screen such that it knows what the native resolution of your display is. Um, here that was from my full screen setup, but if I only have one screen, this is my full screen resolution. resolution. And now it would run with this resolution on a full screen. Um, you have to know that and you um, have to make sure that if you run experiments using Pygame, you never have a dual monitor set up because it runs on both simultaneously, which is a bit annoying. Um, okay, so now I want to show you the main game loop. And 
I've already showed you before here that um, it has to sleep, otherwise the screen isn't shown. And the thing if you make GUIs is that GUIs have to actively wait. So they must stay, they must stay in a constantly running loop and not close. So if you have a um, user interface um, and simply execute it and then sleep, it won't respond. It cannot react to what you're clicking because well, what user is clicking on the interface something which your code has to handle, right? So you have to have some thread or the main part of your program actively wait and wait for callbacks. So functions which are called when the user, for example, presses a button from the user interface. So if you want to have other stuff simultaneously running to your user interface, you have to have separate threads. Um, or So threads are basically lightweight processes, which we're going to look at next week with the caveat that basically all Python GUI libraries need to be in the main thread and to communicate with them, you would need to use. We have no time for this. So I only want to show you the version where you have one thread and where well, your game or your experiment is running in this one main thread. And this leads to the structure of having this main game loop, which I'm showing you right now. Um, so inside this presentation, by the way, I'm switching directories because I have many um, many files in for Pygame, for PsychoPy, and for experiments, so I'm switching now to this um, Pygame directory here using rest.change here. So this here is um, a piece of code with the main game loop, so note that we will not run Pygame from inside Jupyter Lab due to the constraints I told you earlier, um, but we simply ex so I show you the code which in which is in these files, and we're going to execute this by simply running Python from inside Jupyter. Okay, so let's look at what we're doing here. So we're creating um, some Pygame display, set the mode, then have this running variable equals true, and then we have and basically in finite loop which runs as long as this variable is true. And then inside this loop, we have the event handling. And this is how Pygame works. That is, we also have this pygame.event.get. And this is empty as long as we didn't click something. But as soon as, for example, we click a button on the keyboard or with the mouse, or we click into the top right corner on this X here, uh, we're going to get some Pygame event. And if we press this X here, this is going to be the pygame.quit event. And once this happens, we're setting running to false so that, such that this loop ends and our main game loop ends and our entire thing ends. Okay, so now if we run this, we're going to have this, which is active and performs active waiting. And as long as I don't click this button, it, it's on. And as soon as I click this, it ended. So this here is the main game loop. We have an infinite loop or a loop which runs until we tell it not to anymore. We could as well break inside here and have while true. And then inside this loop, we're constantly polling um, events. So we're constantly asking, is there a new event? Is there a new event? Is there a new event? And as soon as there is something, we can react to this. And if we had other events, as for example, button presses, we could um, handle them here. OK. Um, so I have a variant of this one, which opens in full screen. So this, as you saw, went in a window. And if you have experiments, you generally want to use full screen. And this is just um, the code of how full screen runs normally. So here, um, we make the full screen mode. And then we have more events. I'm going to show you the keyboard later. But just you see here that we have another event type, which is key down. And then we only want to use the key F. And if this F key is pressed, then we're toggling full screen. So if it's already on, um, we make it full if we, we turn it off and otherwise we turn it on. And if the user presses X, we're ending anyway. This um, pygame.quit or if we're pressing the escape key. So we end if the user presses escape. And if we now run this, this is full screen and now I'm hitting the F key. Now it's not full screen anymore. And as soon as I hit F again, and now once I press escape, um, we're out. So this is the main game loop, which you always have if you're working with some kind of UI, also for experiments. OK, but for an experiment, we also need, of course, something to show the user, some kind of stimulus. So let's look at how to do this in Pygame. And for this, if we create anything visual, it is its own surface. And we use the function blit to copy 
contents from this surface to, for example, the surface we're going to see in our window. However, doing so only draws it on the back buffer, where all objects are drawn before they are shown. So uh, UI libraries generally have a back and a front buffer, and the front buffer contains everything that is shown right now. And everything you want to draw with the next update, you first draw onto the back buffer, and then you call the, the flip function to switch front and back buffer such that now what you do earlier is visible and what used to be the front buffer can be emptied again and you can uh, draw other stuff onto that. This makes sure that um, everything is drawn at the same time, which is supposed to be visible at the same time. So how can we do this? Well, we can simply load an image using pygame.image.load and then blit it onto our screen, so screen.blit the image as argument, where is the position as the destination. And then, like I said, we afterwards have to flip the display such that we see what we actually, so that we actually see um, what we wanted to show. Now, this is how it looks. Oh, by the way, I also have a version where it's resizable here. Um, so normally these windows are not resizable and we cannot see the full image. Yes, we cannot only um, display images, of course, we can also display text. And this is a bit annoying in Pygame because it only accepts absolute coordinates on the display. So I made this helper function, which shows the text where I want, where I want it to be. So either at the full center, which is in the middle of well the height and the width, new line center, which is one line above uh, below the center, bottom or top, and it's always somewhere in the middle. Uh, this I actually used for one experiment I coded um, a couple of years ago. I coded it purely in Pygame, which is not the best idea, due to issues we're going to look at later. Um, but it is certainly possible if you don't care for too precise response times. Okay, so how do we do this? First of all, we, s we fill the screen, for example, in uh, black here. Our background color is 000, which is black. Then we create a font and we create a text surface, which the text, um, if we want anti-aliasing, the color and the background color. And then we use my uh, get position function to get the position x and y. And then we blit our new text surface. So we also have to create a text. So we cannot simply print to Pygame, but we have to create a text surface, which is then again something we can blit onto screens, just like the image before. And uh, so we do this the same way we did with the image. We flip the display. And if we now run this, it shows text here at the top, and if I used um, not top, but center here um, in the respective script, it would show at the center, but you can calculate the exact position you want to have. All right, you can also present moving stimuli if you want to. And how does this work in Pygame? Well, we only have this main game loop. So if you want to something to move inside there, well, as long as you're not showing videos, for which you again need a separate thread or process, um, but if you don't want a separate third process, what you have to do is, well, you have to update the position every time, every update of the screen. So in this main game loop, um, well, first of all, we have this kill event here to just make it quicker that the user wants to exit using escape or um, the quit at the top right. And then well, we simply update the position in every single loop. And then, well, we screen or fill emptily um, to override the earlier image. And then we blit our image with the newly calculated positions. We flip it and we sleep in between such that it doesn't run too fast. And now if we run this, I actually run this from inside uh, to better. But this is how it looks. Again, this is not really efficient. And if we wanted it to be efficient, we would use these dirty rectangles such that not the entire screen is emptied, but only where it used to be before. Um, but this goes far beyond what we want to do. Yes, and then last thing for Pygame Stimuli, we can also create sounds. So we have to pre-initialize the mixer here, and then we can simply play a sound using um, Pygame. Um, note, however, that I screwed something up here. I don't have an available audio device, which is not the fault of Pygame, but I think the fault of my recording setup. It would normally work. All right, so now that we can display something to the screen, 
we also have to react to user input. And this also we do in our main loop. So a user input is an event, like pressing the X, which I told you earlier. So a key press is an event of type pygame.keydown. So if we encounter an event of such a type, we can check for which key it is. Okay, and if you want to compare, then you have to simply ask, well, is it this and this key? And for a list of which keys exist, here is the list. And with this, we can basically write functions. For example, we can write the wait for any key function, which contains our main game loop here. Okay, so the wait any key function waits as long as we don't have an event. And if we have an event, well, is, if that event is escape, we return false. Or if we press the X, we also return false. And otherwise, we return event.key, which is the key number. So whatever wait any key returns is going to be the number of the key which we pressed. Um, this is where we could wait for only one kind of key in which we only um, return anything if the key was pressed, if the key we wanted was pressed or escape. So this returns true if, if the one key we were allowed to press was pressed. You could also wait for multiple keys using these functions, but this is how you generally do it. So this is what's left of the main game loop. So this is where we are actively waiting here. Okay, and these are already the first three parts which I mentioned earlier. And this we can put together to create some kind of experiment. So let's use, let's use what we know so far uh, to make a sample experiment where the subject is supposed to press left for even numbers and right for odd numbers. So we only looked at the GUI part, so we don't measure response times or save the results, um, but we simply play a sound which you won't hear when the subject was wrong. Okay, so let's look at the code here. This is the last one with Pygame. So these parts here we know already. This is a get position function we had. These are the wait any key and wait key functions I just made. And then in our main function, where we are setting everything up, which we need to set up. This here is um, the list which contains the press keys, which we could use to analyze them. And then we start by filling our screen with a background color. We show some introduction text. We actually show it. Um, then we're also rendering the space to continue onto the screen. We show that. And then we're waiting for the space key. So this here waits until the space key was pressed. And if it, this wait key returns false, then we were supposed to exit. Then we press the escape key. And then our main function simply exits. Otherwise, well, this prepares the effect. And then what we're simply doing is we are having a loop in which we're showing some random number, which um, we make sure to not be the same one as we showed before. So a number between 1 and 9. So we show a different random number from 1 and up to 9 for four times. And then we're actually displaying this number. And then we're waiting for any key. And whatever then was pressed, we append to our press keys. Um, if key was false, then we have to return because then the user pressed exit. And otherwise, this is what the effect we do. So if the user pressed the wrong key, we're playing this beep. Okay, and this runs for four times. And afterwards, we're showing some message, thank you for attending. We're actually displaying it. We're waiting for any key press and we're printing out the keys the user pressed. Okay, so now if we run this, this is how it looks. So now we have to press space. Okay, so I figured out there's something wrong with my sound drivers and it kind of doesn't work. Um, for me, it only works when I run with sudo. Um, you shouldn't have these problems. I didn't have the problems earlier. I don't know what I did wrong with my sound drivers. But yeah, let's run it and get the instructions first. And then we have to press left for even ones. So I press left, now I press left, which is wrong. That sounds awful. Left and here left again. Thank you for attending. And now it prints me the press keys, which is left, 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 left. So it was wrong here. And now we could work on these keys. We could have saved the response times, etc. I just want to show you the really simplest way of how to do something. And that is this way.